Well, thank you very much, Ed, for, for coming. Ed, you are the, the director of the Kavli Institute for Systems Neuroscience and of the Centre for the Biology of Memory in Trondheim. If you take one grid cell, it, it sort of uh, is able to, to measure the space. How does it work? How, how does this cell manage to compute? From what inputs, what connections? Well, that's a good question. That's uh, what we are working on. Uh -huh. uh, we believe that the grid cells, the, the hexagonal pattern uh, that is sort of overlaid over the whole environment, is computed within the brain itself. It's not something that comes from outside. So the network of cells in this brain area somehow organizes itself into this pattern because the hexagonal pattern is the easiest pattern when things just uh, everything competes with everything that's what you get. Now you said <clears throat> all these cells are uh, connected in a very intricate way and, and sort of the holy grail is to understand how they, mm. they connect and compute so it seems like a daunting, daunting task are computer simulations helping to, to do that? Definitely. So, uh, because this is so complex, uh, as you say, many thousands of different types of neurons all working together at the same time, it's quite difficult to uh, imagine uh, for our minds how this can happen. So, we are completely dependent on uh, computer simulations. And do you think we can benefit now from, from your findings to make better computers, smarter computers? Yes, so the difference between a classical um, standard computer and the brain is that uh, computers largely work serially. So they do one thing at a time, mm -hmm. but just very, very, very fast. And in that way they can actually do a lot. But uh, the brain does uh, thousands of things at the same time, really at the same time. And then uh, each process has to listen to all the other processes that take place. But that allows the brain to do some things that uh, computers are not very good at. For example, just uh, tell whether uh, to distinguish, uh, say, when a chair is a chair and when a chair is not a chair. It's quite difficult, actually, uh, because um, it's hard to define the rules. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I think that um, we can learn a lot from how the brain does it, and maybe uh, for the future that may actually give uh, ideas about uh, how we can make completely different computers. Mm, fascinating. Well, thank you very much, Ed, for, for these fascinating uh, insights, and we will certainly closely follow your, your research. Thanks a lot. Thank you.